Have you ever wondered if it is possible to run a full digital audio workstation on an iPad? Well, the answer is yes, sort of. And that's what we're going to do today. So I'm actually going to show you how to run Ableton on an iPad. And uh, it's it's actually not only Ableton, we can run pretty much any digital audio workstation or almost any digital audio workstation from an iPad. Now, I originally wanted to publish this video last week, but uh, I noticed that this is uh, very close to April Fool's Day. And I figured people might think that this is an April Fool's joke. Uh, so I decided to delay this one week but this is actually really possible so i'm doing that on a regular basis for all kinds of applications so not not only for digital audio workstations and the way we're going to do that is with the use of a cloud gaming service but before we do that first of all hello everybody my name is michael wagner i teach at the antonet westfall college of media arts and design at drexel university in philadelphia and on this channel i talk about digital media game design and spatial audio and if any of those things interest you i invite you to subscribe or join my discord server an invite link is in the description below and with that being said, let's get into running Ableton on an iPad. How cool is that? Before I continue, I need to make one thing perfectly clear, and that is that there's obviously no native iPad application for Ableton or any of the digital audio workstations out there, really. So we can't run Ableton directly on the iPad. But what we can do is we can use a cloud gaming or cloud computing platform uh, and run Ableton remotely on a cloud computer and then access that cloud computer through the iPad. And that's what we're going to do. Now, the service that we're going to use is Shadow. Shadow has been around for quite some time. You probably heard about it, as, especially if you are in the gaming uh, environment and kind of keep track of what's happening in gaming technology. Uh, it, it actually is relatively old. Uh, it has been around for a couple of years. Um, it has some troubled past. Uh, there was a bankruptcy not that long ago, but it is back and you can sign up for it now and it works actually reasonably well. Uh, now, the idea is that you are renting more or less a computer that sits in a data warehouse. Uh, in my case, I'm here in Philadelphia and that computer sits in a data warehouse somewhere in New York and uh, you access that PC remotely. And uh, the, the advantage of doing it that way obviously is that you don't need to, to constantly upgrade your own system because that's done in a data warehouse and you can also access that computer from, from pretty much any uh, device that you have so you can access it through a phone or to a tablet or through a chromebook or whatever you have uh, and run the latest games on that particular device now because this is just a pc that sits in a data warehouse we can actually do uh, the same thing for all applications that run on a pc really so it's not really restricted only to gaming you can run productivity applications you can run photoshop you can can run, uh, in my particular case, for example, I run Unity and Unreal Engine uh, and access it remotely through my iPad. And obviously, we also can do that for digital audio workstations. And that's what we're going to do today. Now, the first thing uh, that I also need to point out is that this is not the only service that we could use. There are other services out there that do pretty much the same. And one service that we have played around with uh, in, in our university quite a bit is Paperspace. It is a little bit more on the cloud computing side of things, so it's not really really targeted towards gamers, but it provides the same quality of service and uh, really also the, the same experience, really. The main difference uh, between Paper Space and, and Shadow is that with Shadow, you have a little bit more of a permanent setup. So this is really like a, a PC is sitting in a data warehouse and you access it. Whereas with Paper Space, uh, you have a virtual machine that runs on some kind of uh, cloud computing system somewhere. And if you shut it down, you shut it down completely. So uh, it's more like that you actually lose your data because you're shutting down machine and uh, and, and essentially everything is, is gone. Another advantage of Paperspace is the pricing model. With uh, Shadow, you essentially pay a monthly subscription fee, which is currently 30 bucks a month. So this is not inexpensive. That's something that you need to consider. Whereas with Paperspace, for example, you have a pay-as-you-go model. So uh, you only pay for the time you actually use that virtual machine. If you shut it down completely, you don't pay anything. Uh, and depending on your use case, that might be better or worse. Now, I personally prefer Shadow because it is a little bit more uh, permanent uh, so I can install everything on there I have a backup running on that machine it's really like a PC just in the cloud and I'm using it that way Using Shadow is actually very straightforward. All you really need to do is download the Shadow application to your device, which uh, can be an iPad, an iPhone, an Android device, a Chromebook or whatever. And uh, then essentially open it up. It connects you to your Shadow device and then you have access to this virtual machine and you can use it like just like any other Windows machine, which essentially means that you can install all kinds of Windows applications on it. Uh, and uh, one thing that you obviously can install are digital audio workstations. Now, I originally wanted to show you that on the iPad directly. However, unfortunately, 
for some reason, whenever I connect uh, to the shadow, the external display on the iPad switches off. I'm not quite sure why that is. It's supposed to work. I did not get it to work. I might give it another try if somebody's interested. But essentially, to some extent, you need to believe me that essentially if I just open up the shadow application, I get to my shadow PC and then essentially I have access to Ableton and I can run Ableton with a pencil if I want. It's not particularly user-friendly because it's not meant to be used with, with, a, with a pencil device, but I can do that if I want to. And essentially, this is one of the demo songs that comes with Ableton. And uh, I can essentially, here we are, I can essentially uh, use Ableton just like it would be a native iPad application. Now, in order to show you how that actually looks exactly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Shadow, not on the iPad, but I'm going to actually open it up on my Windows device. Uh, I can actually do that. And that will give you a little bit of a better understanding on how the quality of the, uh, of the audio actually is and everything. I've opened up the shadow application on my PC. Now this is essentially the same uh, that you would see on an iPad or an Android device or whatever. Uh, and uh, I decided not to put it into full screen mode, but instead have it uh, have it windowed so to, to essentially make a point. Now, once again, this is essentially a uh, cloud PC that sits in a data center. So what I'm accessing here is a Windows installation on a data center in, uh, in New York somewhere. I'm here in Philadelphia. So uh, it sits, uh, we are in the same region, but there's a little bit of a distance. And uh, on this Windows installation, I can essentially run anything that I want. And as you, as you see, I primarily use it for productivity. So I have all my Office applications here in case I need the full versions on an iPad. I have uh, all the digital audio workstations. And more importantly, I also use it for game development, so Unity and Unreal Engine. So whenever a student submits a, uh, a homework assignment and I am just not in a position to have access to a Windows PC and I'm sitting somewhere with an, with an iPad, I can essentially go into my shadow and open that up and, and check it out. Now, uh, what we are doing here is essentially uh, Ableton and, uh, and uh, what I've done here essentially is I've opened up the demo the demo uh, song that comes with Ableton. And let me just put on my headphones so that I can hear something. And uh, this now works essentially as if I would be sitting in front of, of that PC. So let's just start that. And I can, I can essentially work with the Ableton that way in exactly the same way I would work on it as if it would be here. Uh, the uh, quality is, is very good. Um, I am actually continuing to be amazed about uh, what is possible today in terms of latency. There are a couple of caveats that I need to point out. First of all, there's a little bit of a delay. It's not much, but it is noticeable. So you certainly can't use that for live performances or, or anything of that sort. There's also no way to bring in a MIDI controller because you only have limited access to USB devices. You could use your keyboard and your mouse and possibly a game controller, but not a MIDI keyboard or anything. And uh, the uh, most important thing though is that the uh, user experience relies on the network quality. And that is because uh, when you think about the user experience in a gaming environment, uh, the video or the graphics is usually not that problematic. If you have any network issues, then you will have a frame drop or you will have some artifacts in the individuals, but those are not really that critical. What is however critical is the audio. If you have any network issues in the, the in, in, in the network, essentially the audio will crackle and will drop out a little. So you really rely on having a very stable, consistent network to your to your server. And in my particular case, having the server in New York and being here in Philadelphia, that is about the case 95% of the time. So ever once in a while when I connect, I get audio dropouts because the network is not as stable as I would like it to be. But overall, it is a very nice solution. Um, that you can use if you uh, want to have access to your digital audio workstation, so really any productivity applications while on the go. And uh, it works very well as a backup a solution. So uh, once again, I use it primarily for anything that uh, that is work related. So if I once again, if I'm getting any files from a student and I need to check out if everything is working fine and I don't have a computer around me, but I have my iPad with me, I can connect to the shadow, load up uh, Unity, load up Unreal Engine, load up any digital audio workstation, check if everything is okay and uh, go my day. And uh, this is really everything I wanted to say. Now, if you are interested in these types of technologies, let me know. There are a couple of thoughts that 
that I also have about some other cloud computing solutions that we have used at our university for this particular purpose. Um, but uh, I'm not really planning on doing a couple of videos. But once again, if you're interested in these types of things, let me know and I can certainly do something. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below or join my Discord community. Invite link is in the description below. And uh, with that being said, see you at the next video.